Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find largest value in each tree row. So just like the problem says, given a binary tree here, for every single row, we want to find the maximum element in that row. And as you can see in the first row, we just have a single value. So it's going to be one. In the second row, we have two values among three and two. Two is greater, so it's the max value in that row. In the last row, we have three values and nine happens to be the biggest in that case. So we want to return the result in the form of an array array where each value in the array is the max from every single row. So we have one, we have three, and we have nine, and this is what we're going to return. That's going to be the output for this problem. If you're new to these types of problems, almost always with binary tree problems, you're either going to be doing some kind of depth first search approach or a breadth first search approach. It's usually more common to do DFS, but in this case, what do you think is going to be easier for us to solve this problem with? Probably breadth first search, because breadth first search is also known as level order traversal, which is basically traversing the binary tree by row. So the first row, then the second row, then the third row. It's going to be pretty easy for us to uh, find the maximum in each row if we're actually traversing each row. So the general idea here is with breadth first search, we use something called a queue. In my language, we end up using a double ended queue, aka a deck. And what we do is we initialize, let's say the queue, I'm just going to draw it like this. And we're going to add the root node to the uh, queue initially, and not just the value, but the uh, node itself, because we're going to then pop from this queue. And before we even do that, actually, we're going to compute the length of the queue. We're going to have one value in the queue. So we're going to know that the first row just has a single value or a single node. And then for that, we're going to find that the maximum was one. So in our result down here, we're going to add the one. But for this node, then we're going to check, does it have a left child? Yes, it does. So we add the left child three to the queue. Does it have a right child? Yes, it does. So we add two also to the queue. So now we are done with the first row, but now we're going to compute the length of the queue again. There's two values in the queue. There's two nodes. So we know to traverse the second level, we're going to iterate two times. We're going to pop each of these nodes. We're going to first pop three. We're going to find that so far it's the maximum, but we're also now going to add its children five and three to the queue here. So I'm going to add that five and then I'm going to add the three. But we know that these are, even though they're a part of the queue already, they're not a part of the current level. They're a part of the next level. So then we pop one more time. We pop the two here. So among these two that we popped, we know that three was greater. We know now that we are actually done with this level. So we end up adding three to our result. It was the max value in that row. And we also, for two, we add its children. It doesn't have a left child, so we don't add anything for that, but it has a right child, nine. So we add that to the queue. And at this point, once again, we will see that, okay, now we have three values in the queue. So there's gonna be three nodes for us to traverse this level. And basically none of them have any children. So that's kind of like the base case. But even though this isn't like a recursive algorithm, that's our terminating condition. But for each of these, we're going to uh, pop, we're going to pop five, it's the greatest so far, uh, then we're going to pop three, five is still greater than three, then we're going to pop nine, nine is the largest, so nine is going to be what we add to our result now, so this is overall the solution. And that's how we solve it with a queue. Since we're adding and popping every node a single time, it's going to be big O of n time because with a Q, we can actually pop from the left in constant time, just like we can append to the right in constant time as well. Space complexity, as you can kind of tell with this Q, in the worst case, it's also going to be big O of n. So now let's go ahead and code this up. So I'm going to first initially just have an empty result. It's going to be a list. We know that's ultimately what we're going to return. So I just usually like to write it out at the start. Uh, but we also know we're going to have a queue. And like I said, I'm going to use the deck from Python. It's a double ended queue. I'm going to initialize it with by passing in an array with a single node, which is root. So this will initialize the queue with a single value in it. But 
there is the case where what if the root node is actually null? That is a potential edge case we have to handle. And the way I kind of showed in the drawing explanation is the expectation is that we never append any null nodes to the queue. So the easiest way to actually handle that is just check at the beginning. If not root, if it's null, then just immediately return an empty array. We don't have to even do this uh, code. But otherwise, we're going to check while the queue is non-empty. This is one way to write it. We could also just uh, take the length of the queue, but this actually does the same thing. So I'll leave it the more concise way. But every single time, we're going to get the length of the queue. You actually don't need to do this because uh, in Python, so this is what I'm doing. I'm going to loop for every single time in the length of the queue initially. I'm taking a snapshot here. but we could actually write it like this as well in Python because range is a function. It's only going to be executed a single time. We're going to take the initial length of the queue. But in most languages, for loops actually don't work that way. You don't use a range function. You usually just have a condition and that condition is run multiple times. So I'm kind of writing it this way so that it's easier for you to translate into a different language if you choose. But basically, uh, this will allow us to go through one level in the tree. And we know that uh, for that tree, we are trying to find the max in the current row. So I'm going to call that the row max. We are initially just going to set it to the first node in the queue currently because we know the queue is non empty. So I'm going to say queue at index zero. And we know that's going to be a node. And we actually want the value. So I'm going to say dot value. That's initially the maximum. And then as we iterate over the entire row for every single node, we're going to say a Q dot pop left and that's going to give us the node. And uh, since we ultimately want to find the maximum, we're going to update that row max is potentially a new value like a node dot value. And then so this is finding the max in the row, but we should probably also populate the next row at the same time. So we should check is node.left non null. If it is, let's append it to the queue. Same thing with node.right. If it's non null, let's append it to the queue. And so that's pretty much everything we need to do. But the last thing you shouldn't forget is we actually need to update the results. So after we've gone through the current row, after we found the row max, let's go ahead and append it to the result like this. So result dot append row max. So this is the entire code. Let's go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.